talk about divorce real quick. You had the unfortunate situation of dealing with that um, in your life. A lot of people are saying that, like, you know, the, the current liberal progressive narrative now is that divorce is way harder on women than it is men. And that, you know, uh, men are just the ones who are actually the victors after divorce. And it, the system is just completely biased towards women in every wrong way. Can you talk, tell us about your situation? Well, and, and I think a lot of young people need to realize this. I tell my five sons not to marry here in the U.S. I mean, maybe if they found, it's possible if they found a stable girl, but to be very wary of it because, well, like one of my marriages, I, I was married. And of course, when you have kids, um, you know, of course, you have to pay child support, which I don't have any problem paying child support for the kids. The problem is you don't pay just for the kids. You pay according to your income. So let's say you make 50000 a year. Okay, they adjust your uh, the child support according to that. Well, you move your uh, income up to 100000 a year. She can take you back every year. You make a million a year, she can take you back and get from that. So it goes on what you're making, even though you're not married to her anymore. And even though you didn't make that amount when you guys are married. So mm. you're going to pay for that. And, you, and those, you got to provide uh, child support and insurance. Plus, if that kid decides to go to college, you're going to be paying until 23, 24 years old. So if you're a young man and you marry at, let's say, 22 and you get divorced after two or three years, it's almost like a, it could be like what you call a prison sentence. And also, as a man, you have no rights. If she doesn't want you to see those kids or she wants to make it hard on you, you go to pick them up on your the time you get to see them. She doesn't have to be there. And you have you don't have much recourse. You can take it back to the judge, but he's going to say, well, you got the order here. But if you take that order, the divorce decree to the police, they're going to say it's a civil matter. But if you don't pay child support and you keep the kids when you're not supposed to, that's a criminal matter. They will come and get you and throw you in jail. So that's the way that plays out. So as a man, you have no rights. I don't care. I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. You still have no rights because a woman dang near has to be an ax murderer before you can get the kids. The only reason I got these six kids is because she decided she was from a different country and she decided to go back and didn't want to. She wanted to run a gun. And so I ended up with the kids and I was just very fortunate because I'd been married before and had a couple of kids. I wasn't so fortunate there. And when it comes right down to the bottom line, if you think they won't accuse you, if they're losing and you're trying to get the kids, she'll start pulling the cards of either you're abusive, you lost to the kids, and I've been through all that. And when yeah. you prove yourself innocent, there's no repercussions to her. She's free to do it again. I've had it done to me five or six times in the two marriages that I'm thinking about. So there's no repercussions. So sure. she's free to do it. She's free to do it again. So, I mean, I'm very fortunate. There are guys sitting in prison that didn't do anything, but she can get those kids to say about any, a young kid. I'll give you a small example. She told one of my kids, she convinced him that I had shot him with a BB gun because I had gotten him a BB gun and she didn't want him to have one. And we just shot it together. But he actually, well, he said, well, mom made me remember. Kids are very susceptible to what their mothers say to them. So he believed that, you know, of course I wasn't angry with him. Nothing came out of that, but that's just an example. So they can really persuade the kids. And if you think they won't do that, if it gets down to they're going to lose those kids, because that is the one thing a woman will fight for is her kids. Right. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So that you just, it's really a, a, what's, what's Rolo called an unconscionable contract. What are you going to get out of it? There used to be a time where you got married and you guys were not supposed to deny each other for and intimacy and i mean of course unless you're sick or something like that but now it's like you can come home here and i've had ex partes against me too for no reason all she has to do is go up there and say anything and that judge will give her an ex parte you come home you're out of the house and you can't prove that you didn't do anything and then that's on your record and that's that's an order of protection but a mm -hmm. judge would rather give her an order of protection or give he would rather put a hundred of those, a one hundred of those against a man than not do it one time and then that man do something to the woman and that get on the news, you know, he gets crucified. So yeah. I understand why they do it, 
but it puts the man out of the house and she could have another man in there and you could be paying for the house and this happens. So yeah. most young men have no idea what they're getting into. Yeah. When they marry. Just, because there is just this liberal progressive narrative right now that, you know, that divorce is, and you know, we're, we're going to have to talk about this offline too, because I, I got to prepare more data on this just because I know, so I know instinctively that I'm right. And I know what I have had, seen members of my community go through with divorce and it's absolutely the number reason why the number one reason why guys don't want to get involved with these girls like let's take me for example right and shout out to a uh, real quick shout out to uh seven beers in who donated 50 dollars to me thank you so much i'm gonna hit you with a wow bro um, he said YouTube is not getting this 30%. He used a direct donation link. Thank you guys so much. If you guys want to use a direct donation link and get a conversation piece in here for me or Mr. Mark Daniels, uh, click on that link right there. Send up the donation. It's pretty easy. You can use your PayPal account too, credit card, you name it. Knock yourself out. Uh, I'll shout you out. Really appreciate that. Um, Going back to that, yeah, just the the thing is like, I'll introduce myself for an example, right? So obviously, um, I've started my business in 2019. And I'm trending upwards, right? Up, 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 up. Right. And I'm making more money every year. Um, and so if I were to get married right now in America, and the momentum and everything that I have right now is what I've been literally building up my entire life. My, my whole life's knowledge is why I'm successful right now. And so with, um, with that, if I were to get married with a woman right now, every from the moment we get married, every dollar that I earn after that will be considered part of the marriage. And so like, let's say I'm like, I make $2 million next year, then 3 million, then 4 million, then 5 million, right? She's entitled to 50% of that. And all she did was show up and be hot. <laughs> and she didn't help me build anything. She didn't maintain anything. Um, and that's unfair. That's not okay. And women understand this system. A lot of you guys out there think that women are not predatory. Listen, especially these white women, no offense to my white women out there, but these funny fucking evil white bitches, they know this system in and out. Yeah, I've been with a couple of them. So. Hey, and also yes. something else is you'll be paying for her lawyer to crucify yourself. Yes, exactly. Because I actually have a call with a lawyer later today because I'm, I'm, I'm preparing from all this data on divorce. And yeah, you have to pay the lawyer. Which is crazy. You have to pay the lawyer for her to take your stuff from you. And that's just, that's fucking insane. How much did you spend in lawyer fees yourself, Mark? I probably spent close to 200000 on that one divorce. One divorce cost you $200,000? Yeah. I mean, if you want to count the houses I lost, yeah. <laughs> what about just, uh, what about with just the lawyer fees? Uh, probably a hundred, 120. Yeah. How long? Right. You had? I had some good lawyers because she come out, like I said, a couple of times I got accused of, well, I'll tell you quick. I had a, I adopted a son, which was a mistake, but I did it. Okay. Cause at the time I didn't know if I could have any kids. Well, I'd had to, I didn't know about it. And I had six layers. So don't listen to doctors. Okay. But, um, she had, uh, uh, an aunt that worked at a children's a big hospital here in St. Louis. She took him down there, and that woman said he had no scarring. So then they were after me, okay? Well, fortunately for me in this case, the DFS did an independent investigation. That was the only time they ever helped me out, and it was all bull crap. But see, wait, wait, that, wait. Was her, your, that was her aunt. Your ex-wife said you were raping your son? In the yeah, yeah, because, I, because she was out partying and doing drugs, and I was trying to get the kids. So like I said, yeah, so anyway, I got clear to that, but... Well, that wasn't the only time she, you know, and as I said, there's no repercussions. They can do that over and over and over again. And then the systems position on this is better to err on the side of caution. Well, that's fine, except they drain your bank account, it's, you know, because you're trying to defend yourself from these things that didn't even happen, but yet they can continue to do it over and over again. So, and then eventually it turned into a big she accused me. I got accused of something else, and that turned into a big fight with the system up here. And we didn't have social media then, but I got it on the local news. And my attorney told me, "You punched a tiger in the eye because I embarrassed the system." And then they came after me. So that's why I got my passports for the kids and everything. Six months later, here they come. 
with some trumped up charges and I fled the country. Six years passed, things calmed down. I was able to come back and we made an under table deal uh, that if I didn't start any crap, they'd leave me alone. I just was going to take care of my father because he was sick. So I did that and we're all good friends now. So that's <laughs> how did you how did you make the system look bad? I, I, I kind of missed that. OK, part. they had taken my daughter. I got accused of choking my daughter. That was another thing that happened. OK. And anyway, I got it on the local news here because that was the only media we had back then. They had her in a foster home and something wasn't right there because I had the foster home under surveillance. All right. And I told them that. And, they, and so anyway. And I got that on the news that there was something awry at the foster home. Well, everybody was willing to let my daughter go except for the guardian of Lydon. And she didn't want to. But anyway, they gave me my daughter. And but yet she wanted to see my daughter every month or two. OK, and I took her back there and I knew she was after me. So I wired my daughter for, to get the conversation. There. She went in there the first time and that guardian of Lydon asked her over 100 questions in like 10 or 15, had her under the table crying. And she said, my daddy didn't choke me. My daughter was sick. You guys tricked me. Okay. And anyway, after that, my daughter wouldn't go in there, but I had to take her there. When, of course, we couldn't present that to the judge. When we finally did get there to present it to the judge, and I'm cutting through a lot of stuff, the judge would not let us present the evidence because they were all in it together. My attorney said, and they were like 40, 50 year old, you, you're, uh, they were older men, Jewish lawyers, the best in St. Louis, recommended to me by Chuck Drury, who owns Drury Inns. And they said, I've never seen it like this. But they were all in it together. And they said, they're going to be after you because of what I did. So, but, and get this, the, the caveat or whatever, a year ago, this happened back in 2022. Uh, they wouldn't let, you know, they a year ago, the guy, where she was at in the Falls Chum, they found out he had been Testing kids there since two years before my daughter was put in there. And they contacted my daughter. My daughter told me, said, no, he never did anything to me. And maybe because he knew I was watching and I was, see, there's the value of a father. That's probably the only reason she didn't get tested because I was on, I was on the, the DFS, the social services, the juvenile system, and I pissed them off. I mean, that's why they came after me. But I mean, that's what the book, there's a lot of that in the book I wrote. But the point is, I... I protected my daughter the best I could, and it probably did save her from being arrested by this guy. He's in jail now, but yeah, so, I mean, that's a short version, but that was kind of what went on. But that's what fathers are supposed to do. You protect your kids, even if it means risking your freedom or your life or whatever it happens to be.